Welcome back. Well, turning attention to what you just heard uh, from the policeman there, the unfortunate kidnap of students of, and, and lecturers of Federal Government College, uh, Yori Inkebi. We've got Honorable Yusuf Sununu, who is a member representing that community as well. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, what an unfortunate one it is, really. Um, information out there appeared hazy, sketchy. So um, what information do you have about what happened? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me first of all uh, thank you for inviting me to this very important uh, program. As you really describe it, it's rather very unfortunate that the security li of life and properties, uh, the welfare of average Nigerian, which is a constitutional uh, basis of existence and governance, is being compromised. What really happened was that I have to say that about uh, two weeks ago, uh, we had an episode when a uh, bandit uh, residing within uh, part of the areas bordering Zamfara, Niger, and then KB came up through one of the villages in my constituency. They killed a policeman and then find their way until they reach uh, around Ibeto side where the, we had a quarry and then killed killed some security men and kidnapped uh, Chinese people in the, uh, some, some of the foreign workers in the quarry and they left. Ten days after, they came back to the same area and then they entered into my constituency bordering Bini, Awuri, Kolio, uh, Laka and the rest of the villages around. And they have almost more than seven hours full day operation following house to house, room to room, collecting money handsets and uh, cows with any machine that they find that it can be used for their operations. And they left behind a message that they will soon be coming back. To fulfill their promise, yesterday we had uh, intelligence that they are on their way coming. Uh, they headed directly around 10 a 10 .30 a.m. in the morning. They reached their final destination at Federal Government College, uh, Bernie Yawuri. Even though it wasn't an easy tax, uh, the police engaged them. The mo uh, mobile police, as stated by the uh, police PRO, uh, the counter-terrorism -ter unit that was stationed at the gate of the uh, school and surrounding the school, also engaged them. And they have almost uh, long periods exchanging fire. But unfortunately, they overpowered the police because the num their numbers ranges uh, from eyewitness almost up to 250 coming in heavy motorcycles. So they succeeded in killing one of the policemen and they got accident, uh, access to the hospital, to, sorry, to the school and then abducted some students on, on a specified number of students and five teachers, as was mentioned. The number cannot be exactly begotten because immediately after the bandit left, parents from nearby villages and uh, areas, towns, came and uh, took their words away, so that made it very difficult for us to find what are the actual numbers of students are there. This. But uh, one good thing about it, we have uh, made a lot of contact. And as at last night, even around 1 a.m. this morning, I was uh, I had a discussion with the field commander of uh, Operation Hadarin Daji that they have succeeded in entering into the den of the, of the kidnappers. And I think this is a major success because we are now the, the, the security agencies are now taking agents are now taking the fight to the base of the kidnappers. And uh, as I was also told, that uh, over one hundred uh, eight, over eight hundred cattle, uh, cattle that was that were rescued some days back were recovered. And as at now, the military have covered the area where we are expecting that the Sudan uh, are with the are with the. Uh, with bandits. And then they have also succeeded in uh, creating much casualty on the part of the bandits. This is, uh, <coughs> is ascertained by the intelligence. We have received so many calls from different areas in Niger said I've been liaising with the House of Rep member, Honorable Shehu uh, 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 Rijau, who is also representing Rijau Magama Federal Constituency, and he has confirmed the areas where we have, uh, where are this, the site of the bandits is now being uh, under the, uh, the, the, the military are there, and that the bandits have suffered so much casualty. And where we have, uh, the way things are going up, we do hope with this uh, effort of the military, the, that camp will be completely done away with. We do hope also that uh, 
effort would be done to rescue this uh, student alive and then very healthy so that it can be reunited to the family. It's really a bad uh, experience that we have so far passed through. And then what's part of it now, if you go to Yahudi, the Emirate of the local government, we are now facing an influx of internally displaced persons with so many liking where to sleep, what to eat, where to even engage. Uh, we also, the worst part of it also, we all know that education is the basis of existence of women, but as we are now, virtually the schools are closed down for fear of further extension of abduction. And this will cause a lot of uh, uh, problems to the Emirate and also to the KB state as far as education is concerned. Then finally, we also know that we are at a time of a rainy season where our people are supposed to engage in uh, dry, rainy season farming to prepare their, their own uh, farms in preparation for the farming of this year. And you know the position of KB state has been the food basket and leading champion of the food security of, this, of the federal government. This all is now being hampered, uh, interfered with. We do hope that uh, the, uh, the situation will be brought to uh, an end in the shortest possible time so that uh, normalcy can be restored. But however, uh, I must assure you there is serious apprehension. We succeeded some few days back to convince the people to go back to their villages. But most of them that went back, they said that they said they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. And then with that apprehension, they have to come back to Yahudi. And now that they have really said they are coming and they came back, I know it's another talk of war for us to this thing, but I, oh. I assure you, uh, what is the major issue now here? Yahuda has been a transit route for all those uh, bandits. The major issue now to address this issue is for us to have a permanent, not only just an ad hoc, a permanent uh, team of military personnel that will be resided within that. It is a very big, uh, it's a large, large portion of land that is a very thick forest that yeah. extends from Yahudi, uh, Ben Yahudi axis almost up to Zamfara State. And that is the den of the, uh, of the, of the bandits. Luckily, uh, the surveillance uh, aircraft of the military has identified so many places and they are fully engaging them. And I'm happy. And everybody in, the, in, in those areas, as of yesterday, if you see, you go to areas like Dirindaji, Genu, and other uh, areas, Rijau, people were celebrating. Because for over uh, months now, we have not seen the cause to close our eyes and sleep very well. But now with this uh, concerted effort, we are sure things will change. And they, we pray that the military in their own effort, God will assist them. And also they will sustain the action that has been commended by the people in the area. Mm. You know, when you say that uh, they, they had come before two weeks ago, rustled and went from house to house, uh, and now you say they are in, the authorities, the security agencies are engaging them in their hideouts. Do you know if any of such action was taken before this happened to prevent them from coming well, back? Before That's this I mean. happened, actually, I would say uh, we have communicated to the security and I think they have taken their time to do a surveillance. And it's that surveillance that I've now given them to the ac that, that uh, gave them to much knowledge of the access route being used by bandits. Because they have a common route when they come where they will pass through those surrounding villages. And that's why I think that we should also learn to respect local intelligence. Because virtually all those villages that they are passing through used to call those who are in position authority tell them they have passed here, they are coming to this place, they are going to this place. And I think that also helped to reduce the casualty. Therefore, I think uh, over the period they have studied their, their route, and that's why I can say uh, that the success being celebrated now by the people residing in the area could be alerted to that. But I think also uh, most important is uh, we shouldn't allow things to happen before we can act. We uh -huh. must respect local intelligence. We must have a synergy between security agents. We must also engage local people. You can see a very good example that happened in Borno State where the military and the civilian JTF are working hand in hand. I think this is not be out of place, that we should recognize some uh, committed volunteers who are ready to work within the ambit of the law so that they can be engaged and work together with the military. This is very vital because they have the local knowledge of the surrounding environment. They also have they know the access and the access route of the bandits, and they also know their hideout. So when we have this collaboration, I think it can work better, and then we can... Uh, this, but most importantly is that uh, we can win the war, and I have no doubt about that. The major reason I have this, uh, this up to now, Nigeria as a sovereign nation, we have one advantage over any other bandit or criminal in the country, and that is the access to our airspace. It's only the military and air force that have access to that air force, uh, airspace. So we can utilize our, 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 our advantage of the airspace 
cause a lot of casualty so that the ground forces can, can go in and then uh, do the needful so that we can save ourselves. Because where we are now, we are in a serious crisis. We are in a serious crisis. Economy has really gone down. Nera has lost value. Cost of living is on the increase. Access to food is becoming a, a serious issue because you can't go out. The, my people are always used to talk. Uh, they, they are marketers. They move from Yahoo to different places. But as it is now, you cannot move. You cannot move Yahoo to come to the southwest. If you have to go through, to, through Niger State, it's a serious problem. If you have to go to Kano to, for your own daily activities to buy what you can come and sell to my people in Yahoo, the house, through, uh, the, the road, uh, through Bilingwari. It's a no-go area. Even now, even after Quantagora, uh, a few months ago, a few weeks ago, it has become income, uh, not accessible to people. So what are, where are we going? We are creating a serious poverty. We are creating a serious of a situation whereby if nothing is done, I think uh, the consequences will be unimaginable. And I think it's a high time for us to uh, uh, be act as responsible in terms of this, and I'm quite happy that the, the military they are getting back their confidence and they are working hard to ensure that uh, things normalize in the area. Well, there's something you mentioned the other time about um, partnership with the locals. I'm wondering if that's something that hasn't happened before, if that's one of the gaps that you think may have been responsible for this um, abduction and maybe one or two other insecurity challenges that have happened in Kebi before. And if that is a gap, is this unknown to the authorities at the federal and state level? Well, I think I may say that are contributory. <clears throat> but you see, in all the saga, when we say that there are, as a medical doctor, we have what we call subtle signs. Those signs indicated that if anything is not done, something sinister may happen. And we have seen these sorts of signs. They came, they passed, and they went to a quarry and abducted uh, 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 foreigners. They came for the second time, and they followed house to house, and operated full day, and they said they are coming back. And then uh, they came for the third time. So the subtle sub, uh, uh, sub sign here is that we have to identify well, where are our target, what, what could be their target area? And what are the loose uh, windows that we have? And you know, the target area that can cause a lot of uproar is for them to enter into that for a government college, which they have succeeded. Even mm. though uh, it was also noticed that really that is another target area that can be and that's why that was necessitated by the deployment of almost 21 or so number of uh, counter terrorism union police to protect the, hospital, the, the, the school. But unfortunately, we have to know, these are people that move in large numbers. They are, they are moving in large numbers. Large numbers almost getting to 250, 300. The last time they came, the number all about 300 uh, this using strong machines. So I think the, some, so the, the, the subtle sign is that that's why I'm saying that we have to make utilization of air this thing. If we can intercept them before reaching their target, we can break their convoy. We can cause a lot of damage on, uh, on them, and that will have led uh, uh, to a lot of success. But nevertheless, I think uh, the awakening now we have and the sustained action that we are having now, because uh, right now the field is highly engaged, and then uh, we do hope that uh, when they are dismantled, uh, this thing, and we have also there was also information for all the surrounding villages and their towns to be on close watch of anybody that can come in in a, in a, in a disoriented manner or is a gun, gun shot injury or anything, and then hope, handed over him to security agent. But I think that uh, what happened now in the last uh, uh, 14 hours, if that has been the approach of the military in all the areas we have uh, uprising, I'm sure that will, that, that will have overcome it. We well, also pray that God should also uh, increase them in their strength and build more of their distance in terms of their confidence to fight more. And they can only fight more if people also appreciate what they are doing. And I'm telling you, my people, as at yesterday and up till this morning, People are pressing the military. If you are to go and listen to many audio audio uh, messages that are shared through different WhatsApp group and uh, Facebook, you know that really are, people are commending the military. And I hmm. think that military should also uh, understand that goodwill of the people and work hard to ensure that the confidence is restored so that people can now be able to go back when the military asks them to go back and this thing. But I must also repeat that uh, this thing. Yahudi, that very thick forest is very important. It's a key point. 
if you send them, if, if you push them from Zamfara, they come to that area. If you push them from Niger, they also come to that area. Even though there is no uh, base as far as the bandit base is concerned, but that is a very loose area that we must take care of because uh, from there, uh, if you come to, the, the, we don't know, is that, are they targeting to enter to, into Yawuri? And you can imagine 300 men fully armed coming into a local government headquarters. You know, nothing can be done. So this is the time for us to weaken their strength, pursue them, and not only take, uh, them, take as a sustain that this in the areas that have so far been under the military. Let it be remain with the military so that they cannot regroup and then form another uh, base. All right, uh, because I mean, when you say they come from Niger, they go to that particular area. And then the collaboration between the people and security agencies, because volunteering information will go a very long way. Because if they come in that such number, 200, 300, and many people or some people will know a thing or two. But just give us a moment, we'll return and uh, talk a little more on this matter. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, Honorable, you know, there are different things that uh, should have been picked up uh, both before it happened and perhaps after so that we could ensure that this doesn't happen again. But when you said that they came about two, three times going from house to house, spending seven hours, they intend to strike fear in the hearts of the people. And then they attack several areas in order to confuse people before they eventually struck this school. But there are those who will want the same, but we know that uh, the intention is, above all else, strike schools, discourage people from going to school because they want to attack those kind of institutions. And now, unfortunately, this federal government college. Well, for the benefit of hindsight and to ensure that we're learning the right lessons, do you think we did enough to ensure that uh, they don't get to that school? But unfortunately, this happened. No, I think I can't say we have done enough because if we have done enough, uh, right from the day they came and they passed and went and kidnapped a Chinese, uh, it was, I don't know, I can't know their nationalities, but foreign near the, just some few kilometers away from my constituency. And they also came from house to house in the areas at, at earlier mentioned. And then finally they strike. I think uh, we have not done enough. Ideally, right from the word go, from the first one, because we are in contact. There should have been redeployment, massive redeployment to those areas, especially when their routes were known. So had it been that happened, because they came, they were, first of all, they were on challenge. They killed a policeman for the, uh, when they came for the first time. The second time, they shot uh, some people, and then they have access freely to a browse they want to go. Nobody challenged them. So they have the feeling that not uh, this. Even this one, they came and they succeeded, except that the get of the school, nobody engaged them. And this is, we are now talking of a, of, of a journey of over hundreds of kilometers from their base to where they are in a very thick forest. And it's not that there wasn't intelligent. There was really intelligent. There was really intelligent. But uh, yesterday, uh, the attraction made, especially when the school was uh, uh, being now the target, has caused a lot of uh, uh, uprising and that has really led to this. So I think that's what I said before. We must identify subtle signs and then ask within subtle signs. And most importantly, we shouldn't neglect local intelligence. Because local intelligence are those people who are within the vicinity that the bandits are passing. So if they say they saw uh, this, even though I agree uh, over the days there were so many rumors that they are coming, they are coming, but unfortunately it come to pass. But those rumors must be taken seriously. And then when it is passed, there should be a surveillance. If we have had a very good surveillance prior to now, tracing their footpath, we will have engaged them before they are even where they are. So I think uh, enough saying that we have done enough to prevent the decision, it's not this thing. Only measures that was taken, I, and I said it, and I commend the, both the state government and the police for mobilizing to the, protect the school. But you see, that should have been extended by mobilizing the, this thing. But we have to also know that the power to mobilize military is not within the state government. So, but now that it has come to its peaks, we are, as I said, it was a celebration gala yesterday in the constituency up till this morning. People were happy that uh, probably this is bringing us to the end of this uh, serious calamity we find ourselves. Well, I, I imagine the mixed feelings, because clearly with this kidnap and the killing, 
a lot of people are not happy as well. But uh, for the sake of clarity, and more importantly, emphasis, so how many people were kidnapped uh, during that uh, attack yesterday? You see, I told you it wouldn't uh, be possible to really know what really are uh, this. Because when they came, they came with their own private vehicle, apart from the ones that came uh, with motorcycle. They also uses the Hilux of the police that were killed, that were stationed at the at the school. So they loaded those uh, students in those uh, uh, Hilux, and then they started going with them. One of them that had sustained gun injury was thrown out of the car along their way. So somebody has a good matter, has pick, uh, pick her, and then uh, take her to hospital. But then along the line, their vehicle broke down. So some students escaped. As of today now, as of yesterday, uh, as of today, we have about 17 students who have sustained injury while uh, running in the bush, barefooted, been treated at the uh, General Hospital Yawuri. But specifically, even I've spoken with the school authority, they said they could not exact, give the exact number of the student, but that staff, that of the staff is known. But for the staff, so for the student, some parents pick their student away, some rush, uh, rush into the bush and then had access to the footway to Yawuri, and all those now put it, uh, uh, put it, make it very difficult for us to ascertain the number of the students that were there are with them. But mm. we do hope that with the pressure and uh, their inability to move further, will allow them to surrender and then uh, release the remaining students that are with them in the shortest possible time. Well, we, we clearly hope so. But while you might not be able to put a figure on, on the latest kidnapping, but from December uh, to this moment, at least 800 students have been kidnapped, spanning across four states and I mean it was only a matter of time some will say because we've seen kidnappings in Kaduna, Zamfara, Niger State and now Kebi State. After that, that, that massacre, some have called it early in the month uh, in, in, in Kebi State uh, as well across some villages in Danko Wasago local government area. Mm -hmm. So clearly this is something exactly. that has happened time and again. But if you could just refresh our memories really or help us understand why is there the persistent problem of banditry in the northwestern region of the country, especially in the states I've mentioned? Why? Well, I think the major reason is that uh, is the fight is becoming an isolated fight. And when you have an isolated fight, then you create a problem. If you fight them today in KB State, the next thing they will move, they move to Zamfara. If you are approaching them as Zamfara, they move to Kasuna. From Kasuna, they now move to Kaduna. And from Kaduna, they move back to Niger. So, and thereby strength, uh, uh, bringing a much of a what we call, uh, burn out syndrome, even on the, mil uh, on the military, if I may use that medical word. But you see, if we can have a concerted approach, whereby the, those states in the north, uh, uh, west can come together through the leadership of their respective state, approach the federal government, let us deploy a very strong force that will encircle those areas and engage them in their own base. That will help the situation. But if we continue with this isolated attack, they will always, it's going to be very hard for you to finish a camp 100%. And they will go back and recruit, uh, at a group and recruit more so that they can create another, uh, another camp. So I think it's the approach and this, and I think for us in the Northwest, it's high time for our state governors to realize that in fighting banditry as we are now, we need money. No small, not, not, not too much can be spent to come to, to bring this to an end. Because what we are here is to how we can improve infrastructure, how we mm. can have access to health, how we can give uh, improve our agricultural design. All this cannot be achieved when you are when you don't have uh, security. The world healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Mm. The health must be accompanied by security. Why you don't have security of your life and properties? Creating a hall creating an avenue where people can come and recreate themselves and then refresh themselves, doesn't matter. Because as, as a now, we might have provided a better school in one of the villages. But now this insecurity has displaced the people. The school is there empty and may even be used by a bandit to take a cover. So it means that we must realize the first and famous priority for us in the Northwest now is to provide security of life and properties. And right. then we follow it with the welfare packages and then mm. assure people so that they can have hope that normal business can be restored. Okay. And well, otherwise, honorable, I think it's a decent. So, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that question. Who are these bandits? Are they unknown? What are they agitating for? Really, th th that's what I'm trying to find out here. Who are they? 
You see, these bandits are a group of criminals. A group of criminals. You cannot say one person is involved with this thing. And then if we have tried to uh, this uh, the predominantly uh, what you can see, you cannot say this is a particular tribe. But the majority of those who have inter uh, interrupted with and we have discussed with them will tell you that they came there and speaking Flani uh, language. So one cannot say really they are only Flanis because in a criminal, it's a, it's a gang of team because uh, they may be the ones that are the full soldiers, but all of their informants that are within the society, who communicate to them, who tell them where they are, if I've had a, 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 an audio that was uh, being aired uh, about uh, yesterday and also of a professor in uh, Ebu Zaria, the kidnapper was telling him that the person that is informing him is right now close to him. And they have told him his route from Abuja to Zaria and all that, had, uh, and all that happened. So you understand why the full soldiers may be a particular tribe. But the major is who are the, who are the, who are the source of information and who are also sharing in the dividends of that. And that is, I think, is left to intelligence and the, and the security agent to find who are really benefiting from this, uh, uh, this thing. And then we must also be able for us to call as a nation. We must call a spade a spade. Whoever is your position, whatever is your position, irrespective of your political affiliation, tribal or religion, you must be called as, be seen as criminal and be treated as so, as such. And if we do that, definitely we can have the, 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 the cost too. But I so, don't want also us to take it as a problem of only one area. These people, if they are to go to any particular village, they don't care whether you are an Igbo man, whether you are a Yoruba man, whether you are a Flani man, whether you are this and that or not. All they are after is the authority, uh, they want to have access, to have a free, uh, feel free day, feel day, and then if anybody, any attempt to start, uh, stop them anyways, they, uh, your life is, is, is immaterial. So mm. we must treat them as criminal and then work hard to ensure that things are done. But by you the know, time we begin to put politics, we put religious uh, and other affiliation into it, then we are getting it wrong. Because it might be, if you look at insecurity, initially we thought it was a Meduguri issue. We now say, okay, it was Meduguri Yobe. We now say North East. But now it's becoming a national issue. And it's, it's of a very major concern. So we must see the criminals are criminals, and irrespective of, where, of their personal affiliation, uh, affiliation, let's treat them as so. And we must also not profile any language or any tribe or any religion. Because if we do that, we're also getting them wrong. Because those people that were saying, they are also not spared. They are also not spared. If you go to Yahoo now, you see so many local flannies in Yahoo town who are displaced. They are internally displaced people. They are also looking for this. They are also not safe. So you understand. So therefore, it's a group of people. And among them, you see houses, you see many other tribes. Because it's now becoming as an entity of business uh, that is so far flourishing in terms of kidnapping. Uh, mm -hmm. So we must cut off that uh, chain of reaction and then stop it. And then let's see how this country can progress without peace. The stability of this country is questioned. The unity of it is questioned. The economy will be grounded. Everything will go back to our distance. So I think it's a sad time now that we should call a spade a spade and act within the ambit of the law. Well, you, you suggest that uh, politicians will need to work together to ensure that these kind of things don't keep happening because at the end of the day, it affects everyone else. But Policing is equally a huge component here because if uh, uh, the bandits came to the state and then did what they did several times, uh, the military had to come in. Does that suggest that uh, because it, it uh, I mean, there are questions as to the capacity of the police, which has been raised several times. What do you think can be done in that regard? You see, there are a lot of things that can be done in that regard. You see, uh, that's why the constitutions put security and welfare of individuals as a basic fundamental right. And we have to get it right. Take, for example, a police that was engaged in a banditry or any other crime or this thing, and he sustained a gun injury. He ended up uh, being incapacitated. Nobody takes care of him. If you go back to his house, nobody, uh, this thing, if you die along the line, Within 24, 40, uh, within, within two, three months, the, his, uh, uh, his family will be evacuated from the uh, barracks and then they will go back to home. Nobody will take care of them. And then those who are surviving and partaking in this, uh, in this uh, effort to restore security are seeing the condition of those who died uh, in active services and how they were treated. 
their ability to do the needful and pay the sacrifice, even with their life, in protecting this nation will be affected. So we must restore confidence on the security agents. We must restore that confidence on their family. We must restore that if they are, the family will have the feeling that they can pray for them to go and survive. But even if they die along the line, the family will not be in fear that they will be worst, they will see the worst situation of their life. So we must take care of that security of, uh, properties. And we must also agree that there is need for a cooperation between local and the security agent. The security agent must be able to protect the locals who would volunteer information to them. If today you are to give an information and you'll be confronted with a phone call that you have volunteers also, next time you'll never do that. So we must have the element of confidentiality information sharing between uh, locals and the uh, this thing. We must also be able to call them together and work together. If we work together, uh, we'll strengthen the force of police. And then it is also higher time for the uh, for the nation to resolve the issue of crisis that uh, is ongoing between the Office of Inspector General and the Police Service Commission. So that whoever has had the right to recruit, let it be so and do it immediately. And we need them to be recruited. This youth that we have, if you are to come to my village, I can provide you with over 500 youth. In my own constituency, I can provide over 4,000 or 5,000 youth who are ready to join the Nigerian police force. Why can't we, uh, why can't we join them? Why can't we join them? Let's all train them. If the bandits are using number, let us also increase our number. Let us increase our number. We can recruit. As I said, there is no much that can be decent. Put your, uh, whatever you want to put. If the people have no the, uh, the, the right to come out freely and move, those structures will be dilapidated without being put to use. So I think it's time that we have to uh, make everything, go back to the uh, drawing box, and then prioritize security. I can recall even when we are discussing this issue in the, in the House of Rep uh, chamber, I made it clear that we must declare state of emergency. We must declare a state of emergency. By implication, if we have state of emergency in security, the security can profile you, they have the right to caution you, they have the right to access your, uh, where they think that there is a suspected uh, item there, so that they can take a proactive measures. And they can now respect subtle messages, subtle security signs, subtle whatever you can call it, so that they can act and prevent the mayhem from happening. But okay. after the mayhem happened, we now come in, it doesn't speak well of any nation, and I don't think that should be acceptable. The Honorable, um, you referenced something the other time about, you know, what could be the, the cause, the the crux of the issue, really. Um, you referenced unemployment one way or another when you were speaking earlier on. So I'm wondering, do you think we can get ahead of this security challenge without solving the unemployment problem, whether at the federal level or at the state level? It's just not possible. It's just not possible. That statement still stands. An idle mind is a double workshop. And you know, in workshop, anything can happen. You can repair, you can amend, you can also cause harm and damage. So we shouldn't allow uh, youth to be unemployed. If you have 100 youth that can be enticed by just 50,000 to mobilize them, and then you now have a group that have so far amassed so much money, and they have much money, they can easily use it and buy the will of those youth and engage them in their own uh, criminal ways. So we must create, there's no doubt about it. And this is all, this not only be limited to government. Our world to be individual should come out and serve as entrepreneurs. Create an enabling environment that they can create small and medium scale uh, companies in their respective areas so that those use can be uh, decent. In each and every state that you go, I cannot, I, even if I swear, I don't doubt it. You have more than 40 or 50 well-to-do individuals that can develop 50 well-to-do small-scale industry. Take KB for example. If you have 50 people that have that weather, weather, weather to bring a small and medium-scale industry, and you have them cited, those 50 are distant. If, if each one is to uh, recruit just 20 to 25 people to work with them, what is the number you have? You understand? So we have to. I, the government should provide an enabling environment and then our people should also have the thinking of investing so that we can engage our decision.
Have the money. Have what you have. If the youth are not engaged, you are the ultimate target. <laughs> so I think if we do that, we are not solving the problem of the youth. We are solving the problem of our own self because it may backfire on us when they are left idle. I, I just, uh, let me set an example. I have, I have one, of my, one of my mentors that he said, no matter how close you are, no matter how close you are to him, let it be your closest relation. Professor Ekele will never pass you in your exams, no matter how close. And what was his reason? He may be the, your next patient. And if you are treated, if he has do you a favor and discharge you, then you will now be the one that will receive the consequences. And that's what we should also think. Those youths may not be our own children, but if you allow them to go, we may be their next victim. <clears throat> well, I've got that point, uh, Honorable Yusuf Tanko Sununu, who also represents Yaori Federal Constituency, is the Chairman House Committee on Health Services and a member of the APC. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, sir. All right. We're back in a moment. Stay with us.